Welcome back to the 50 Chevy Project. Let's build some stainless long tubes. Well, on the last round of this project, we built the motor mounts and the center tube structure. And while building that stuff, it kept in mind that we need to get some exhaust back in here. And the only real viable header options I've been seeing for these trucks are the TCI headers and the Ultimate headers, which are quite a lot of money. And with that, there's no guarantee either one of those options will fit. I mean, it all depends on where your engine is placed, left to right, you know, top to bottom. And I'm not going to spend $1,000 or $2,000 on a set of headers that I potentially am going to have to cut up to make work. So we're going from scratch here. I know that uh, hooker cast manifolds fit these trucks pretty well, but I mean... I'm a performance shop here. We ain't got time for cast manifolds. And if you've been around the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I'm no stranger to mandrel bent tubing and piecing my own exhaust systems together. Figured what the hell, we're super limited on space already, so we may as well put the biggest primary possible in there, right? <laughs> That's not how it worked out. It's just I have a bunch of 2-inch 304 stainless tubing, so that's what we're going to use since... Uh, seems every header kit on the planet costs twice as much as actually buying a set of headers. It still baffles me. But anyway, this is what we're going to use. And we're going to need a set of flanges. And I've got an old set of headers. We're going to cut them out of there and build the collectors from scratch. I cannibalized a set of these turbo headers that don't ever seem to fit anything. <laughs> I stole the V-bands a long time ago off them. But now we stole the flanges. And now we're opening them babies up for two inch. I've got a two inch primary shoved in there. And as you can see here, there's still a weld inside there. I've got all three of these cleaned out already with the hole saw, but what I had to do was, I machined this, this side fits perfectly up in the hole saw, and this side fits in there pretty tightly to keep my hole saw centered from walking around. Another thing you can do is stick another hole saw up inside this hole saw, but I didn't have the right size to go inside here, so had to make that. Our flange bolted on there. And before we get a roll and go over some of the fundamentals here. So I 3D printed myself some tools to help myself along a little bit. And this is a elbow cutting fixture that I, these are all over the place. You can buy them. But I drew this up and uh, 3D printed it. As you can see, it allows you to cut the tubing perfectly in tangent with the center of the radius. So if you don't do that, I can show you on this piece of waste roll bar tubing. This little short piece looks perfectly normal. If I put it on that side, you know it kind of flows. Because this is cut in tangent with the center of this radius, which is, I think, six and a half inches. This one is kind of cut at a skew, almost a little bit of a miter. Not in tangent with the center. And you can see how that would look kind of wonky if uh, you built a set of headers that looked like that. Also, the more crooked you're cut, the pipe gets oblonged and starts getting offset because the profile isn't round anymore. It's more of an oval. So I made that, and I made this little band piece that just slides over the top that I can slide over and then just mark with a marker around wherever I need it to be. I've also made this little guy. So this piece of one by quarter slides right in here and I can clamp this up to the frame and use that as kind of a mock collector for now the pipes will just slide in there and uh, be able to stick out this end because I'll have a little bit of wiggle room with our actual collector to fire that exhaust right where we want it to go I've off cut 490s already in that fashion um, let's see, these three are those short radius pipes and one long radius because I know that we're going to be super tight with this steering here. And I've just got a piece of conduit mocked up in here for now because my actual steering shaft is three feet long and just in the way. So we made one out of a piece of conduit and just clamped that up to the engine block uh, really close to where it comes out of the firewall on the truck. 
So, what I've gleaned from watching other people's build headers. Rule number one, put the plugs and wires in. <laughs> it's crazy how the aftermarket hasn't figured that one out yet, huh? Freaking wire burning things. Crusty old plugs and wires, check. Ultimate header was uh, kind enough to leave us some rudimentary dimensions here and give us kind of a 2D drawing of their headers. And this is kind of going to be our map, if you will. There's no angular dimensions or anything like that, but we're going to kind of follow this general layout. All right, I realize this is going to be about impossible to time lapse because there's so much back and forth. I screw around for an hour fitting this pipe here, only to realize that this uh, second pipe up here, which is, what is it, one, three, four, no, cylinder five, is going to ultimately dictate what I've got for room here. The constraint is the frame, so... I have to get this pipe in here, and then we can just connect the dots to get that one in there without hitting the engine. Same is going to have to happen for the number one cylinder. If you look at this diagram here. Number one is going to the outside, and number five to the outside. So, yeah, I'm getting ready to tack this up. I've got her fit, ready to go. She's just hanging in there.
Well, we got halfway to a farm collector before she popped and gave up on us. Uh, I guess I should have fully welded that out. I only welded about an inch on the top. And that's where it folded over and caved. So I guess we're going back to the old drawing board. back for the mulligan <laughs> as you see now i was able to clamp these up into the bandsaw so i don't have to do all that hand work with the angle grinder and instead of using eighth inch roll bar tubing we bumped her up to a 200 wall dom and i also relaxed the angle a little bit here so it doesn't have to do so much work stretching it you can do it more gradually so we're going to completely weld this up now I'll uh, completely take this all out so it don't come apart again. Well, we'll give that a try, huh? Still gonna reach down in here and MIG what I can. Kind of impossible to get TIG torch down in there. But we TIG the outside so the weld didn't get all humped up and stayed flat. So we don't have to grind it all away. All right, round two. We're gonna try and continue what we started here. Hopefully it'll straighten out. But I welded it completely inside, outside, and capped it too so i don't think this one's gonna smash it's going i cut that and that was getting screwed up off and I've got a bushing driver for driving transmission bushings that fits right in that tube you can kind of see where it's buckled here but it's helping hold the shape I think now I'm going to take the air hammer and a blunt bit and try to help that stretch take place a little bit try and drive that in there she'll go or she won't
we got so close that time. But, uh, yeah, we can't be mutilating that up like that. That ain't gonna work. And, uh, yeah, I tore the pipe there. On to plan C. Well, here's plan C. Four inch. That way we can, uh, it'd be more forming it than stretching it so much. Uh, this stuff's pretty thick. This is like, uh, sanitary pipe. Hopefully I can get her pushed in in the corners without beating the hell out of it. And after we get her, uh, formed here, we'll cut her down to length. And we got a nice 4x3 cone reducer to weld on there. So I suppose all you TIG welders out there have just been cussing me this whole while for not back purging or using any back gas. That's because we're using this stuff here. Solar flux. Prevents oxide inclusions, protects backside from oxidation. This is just a powder that you mix with alcohol and you brush it on there. Got my little tub here. But uh, 
You can see it's still on inside of that pipe there. So without any back gas, that's what you get inside. It kind of burns up the metal. It turns all sugared and just not good. This is what it looks like with that solar flux. It leaves behind kind of just a little bit of a slag, kind of like a stick welder. I like it. It's a lot less screwing around than trying to back purge everything out. As you've seen, we're not really running any filler. We're just fusing it together and just coming in with some 35 thaw 308 when I get myself in trouble if the joint starts opening up. And uh, that lap weld, we added filler on that one. As far as settings on the TIG here, we're running 65 thousandths wall tubing, so we're at 60 main amps, uh, 30 hertz roughly on the pulse frequency, and 50% on both the base amps and the pulse time on.
so much fun lining them collectors up that uh, kept on rocking right back to the mufflers. What I did here is I've got the headers parallel with this part of the frame. See the frame angles right there. So my headers and the short stub is parallel with the frame. And then when I transition up, I paralleled that tube. So when it's up on the hoist, it'll be good aesthetic. So only one thing left to do here before we pop these headers back off to weld the collectors out. Bunghole! What the hell's a bunghole? Will you find out what a bunghole is? You are a bunghole. <laughs> and so am I. <laughs> there will be more bungholes after me. This kid's messed up. Are you threatening me? You will give me TV. Bunghole. What? Too much bunghole? The bunghole. It is nothing to be ashamed of. Nice catch. figured building the collectors was going to be the most challenging part of this project. Whoops. <laughs> but at almost 100 bucks a piece to buy them out, right? I think it was worth the struggle and we learned a lot in the process. We also got a brand new appreciation for them a $350 set of speed engineering headers that I normally run with. I mean, the amount of time and materials it takes. I'm telling you, Ultimate Header is right on par with their pricing because <laughs> I just look back and we've got roughly 31 hours of time-lapse footage there and I didn't show both sides I only showed one side of the process as we went and the ultimate header you build it kit is just over a thousand dollars just for the materials so they're right on par there
But now we got ourselves a set of hairs that we know fits and we don't have to spend a bunch of money cutting something up that we spent a bunch of money on, which I really didn't want to do. So next one, we need to get that cab back on there so we can get the plumbing and wiring this thing up. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time.